some two years ago, we were in this same venue, I think. I made a point that said then there was nothing talking about expropriation without commerce. I said to, 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 to the audience, if rational people in South Africa don't take the discussion on land forward and come up with ideas that make land redistribution a reality, the extreme peripheries are going to take over the debate and this debate is going to be characterized by anarchy. We're close to that now. We're close to that now. We still have a chance. Uh, and the point I was making uh, to my colleagues who were farmers, uh, really in the main white farmers, say to them, volunteer land uh, because there's land hunger among black South Africans. And if you think that the status quo can continue, you're applying a seat for land occupation. At that time, we said, if it starts here, Zimbabwe will be a Sunday picnic. That's what we said. Because you see, when you're hungry for something, you can't access it. You smell it. You can't access water because water rights are given to farmers and they go through a village and that village cannot access that water. You are actually sowing seeds for anger. That is what I said two years ago. And I said, let's have this debate, let's have the dialogue, let's talk about it, uh, let's agree on how to manage the land question in a way that allows all of us to be having access to land. Uh, Jeremy says I'm a farmer, and he says a successful farmer. You see, I, I made an argument talking to mine uh, stakeholders. They said 30% is not substantial. And I say mathematically it is. It is substantial is from 0 to 30. But if you compare 30 to 100, it's not substantial. And, and, and they left me alone. You know. uh, I said, uh, if it's 0, there's nothing. Then you, you advance, you reach 30%. That is substantial. But if you compare that 30 to 100% ownership, then you may argue it's not substantial. I think that de that debate is going to be featuring here in one form or another. The, the first narrative that we must demystify is the narrative that black ownership of land is equivalent to destruction of food production and food security. I think we should totally demystify that narrative, destroy it because it's a dangerous a narrative uh, because if you don't have access to land and they say you can't farm they they are right because you can't be a farmer unless you farm and you can't farm unless you access land so it's, 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 it's a dangerous narrative that giving land to blacks will destroy food security and will destroy food production it's a dangerous narrative and I think we should first demystify that notion totally. Uh, secondly, I don't know whether, Jeremy, this is expropriation that we're talking about or is restoration. I, I think we should look into that because, you see, I, I was born in Tala, grew up there. I still regard Tala as my home. And one of the things that I've been raising in the ANC all the time, first of all, as, as a law enforcement, to say, this debate on land is a wrong debate. We're, we're debating it wrong. And number one, we, uh, uh, we're raising this thing that 1913 cannot be the, the, the date. It's a wrong date. And people ask me why. I said, I grew up in the Eastern Cape. You can't talk land. Uh, uh, land redistribution in the Eastern Cape without talking to the wars of disposition. Because if you are separating them, you're going to have an academic debate, you're not going to deal with it. Uh, you know, there's a man that, who is my hero in the Eastern Cape called uh, John Sobo Makom. He's my greatest hero. He fought seven of the nine major wars of disposition. He commanded them. Uh, he became a general without being a general. He became a king without being a king because he fought these seven wars 
One of the most exciting one is the Battle of Koko. Because Koko was the brother to Kiali. Uh, there was this land between the Kiskama and the Fish River, which was declared as a, as a no man's land. And Koko, as a young man, took the cattle to that land and he grazed them there. Uh, and then the British soldiers came and wanted to take this, this cattle, and he said, No, you can't take this cattle because they belong to the royal family. They scratched him with a bullet and he bled. He bled. And they described this, uh, this incident as he came to Makoma. They don't say bleeding. It's, it's very graphic because they say, Wafika Eli Jaja Likas. You see, Yabana was that language, the language of war. Ufike Eli Jaja Likas. Meaning that he was bleeding profusely. And then, then Makoma said, There can be no peace when the children of Ngaga are bleeding like this. That battle started, the Battle of Kokla. So I'm raising that issue because you can't be a historic in dealing with the land question. That is the, the first thing. You, you can't be a historic. You must be historic. You must link it to the wars of disposition. You must be able to trace the movement of the boundaries from the Great Prague to the Great Fish, Fish, Kiskama, Kiskama, Kume, Kume, uh, uh, Kai. Because those were results of wars, and every time they were moved, that's why we talk of land, we're not talking of animals. But history tells us that after every war, once they were, defe were defeated, there was also a charge of X hundreds and thousands of cattle that were taken uh, as a punishment. You are defeated, you are pushed, go to the east of the Kume River, therefore you must pay 14,000 cattle. And therefore the animals that are going with the land uh, must be factored in, in the debate because we went through that process painfully that way. Until we do that, you see, when the, the, there was a consolidation of a municipality in that area called, they called Raymond Mshaba, uh, I was arguing that it should be Jongsobo Makoma because he fought battles in the Cutback Valley. So that boy, Cutback Valley, should have been called Jongsobo Makoma because that Cutback Valley is very rich, but our people were pushed out of it because precisely it was rich. Now, if we don't touch those wounds, we are not going to be able to settle the land question. That's my argument. Now, as a farmer, Jeremy, I'm not that big a farmer. 534 hectares is not a big farm. I can tell you, it's not a big farm, but it's substantial if you compare to zero. Yeah. If you compare it to zero, it's big. But if you compare it to all my neighbors, my, the smallest neighbor uh, I'm, st I'm sitting with in that area, Elliot, is having 4,000 hectares. You see? That is the smallest owner there, 4,000 hectares around me. He surrounds me almost like uh, an amoeba. Now, that is the debate we should have. Therefore, the debate that is, it was introduced in the conference, adopted by the conference, of expropriation without compensation should be located to the emotional side of land hunger. And the emotional side of history, it should be actually be debated whether it is real expropriation or restoration. Now, I'm raising that. It's not in the resolution. I'm raising it because when you restore, you are not expropriating. You are restoring both dignity and ownership of land. And that is the debate we should be having. Because, you see, Ungu Gaitobi, uh, is from a, a small door we call Kala, you see. But when it is me, we call it a city. When it is him, it is a small door. He knows in the mountains uh, between Fonundil and Lower Kala, there is a place called Ifam Yagaman Dashepa. There's a farm there. But there is history behind that farm, I want you to know it. It's 333 Morgan. Eh? 
uh, bought by my grandfather in, in 1930. He bought the farm in an area called Ida. But he couldn't get that land. He had to go to the native Kalanga district to farm, which was more barren in terms of the quality of land and grass. And he was moved. He bought this land. He worked in the farms. He collected livestock and sold it and bought land. He wanted it in Elliot, in Ida. But they said, but you can't have a farm here. You must go to the native Kalanga. Eh? That's why we ended in that mountain. Eh? Very small Arab piece, mainly a mountain, because as a native, we couldn't access land in Ida where to go to the native Kalanga. So in this debate, we must touch those emotional aspects of land disposition, because if we are not talking about them, we're not going to heal, and it's not going to happen. Now, the ANC in December resolved, let me read the resolution. The ANC should, as a matter of policy, pursue expropriation of land without compensation. This should be pursued without destabilizing agricultural sector, without endangering food security in our country, and without undermining economic growth and job creation. Now, um, as, 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 as an activist, I used to, to say when we resolve, once in your resolution you say, not, that is not a resolution. <laughs> yeah? Once you add not, you should not, you should not, you should not, that is not a resolution. It's more a caution than a resolution. The resolution is that explore the land without compensation. And then we said, let's talk about food production, economic. Uh, and, and, and one of the issues that we raised was, uh, listen, what does that mean? It's important that you don't destroy food production. We looked at it. We work very close with ZANU-PF. I've been to Mashona land. I've been both west and east, went and see the issues. And I can tell you that in the long term, th that program will benefit. But in the short term, it destroyed food production, precisely because they dived into it. Do you get my point? No proper preparation, no development. But later on, they attached extension officers to a group of small farmers of the five hectare a household, much later. That was trying to transform what was the land redistribution, almost described as land grab, into a productive program. Then attached an extension officer to a number of farms, another one for another farm, and so forth. And that tended. That's why last year they said we have the first uh, good harvest for the first time since the land uh, revolution. They said so. Because they intervened much later. We have an opportunity to intervene up as we roll it out. Um, Minister Maite, you are taking over a very difficult portfolio of land reform. You know, the, the difficulty with that, that portfolio is that it has the programs, but the programs are regulated by the bureaucracy uh, in a way that destroys the intention. Now, let me explain this. You see, now I, I, I'm now not theorizing, I'm talking practical. You go there and you say, you, we are applying for recapitalization. Eh? Recapitalization, very good program. It is supposed to support farmers, new entrants to the industry, give them implements and so forth. And I gave up on recap on year five. On the fifth year, I couldn't get it. I gave up, I, I started dis discovering that no, recap is here. So let me not wait for recap, uh, I will never get. When they came after five years, they said, now you're having more than uh, uh, 100 cattle and more than 500 sheep, therefore, you are now a commercial farmer, you can't be recapitalized, <laughs> you see? <laughs> now, now, so those programs are there, they're important, we must refine them. The danger with officials, I hope there are many here, is that their behavior is sit on issues, ministers come and go, uh, we're here. 
and they destroy good programs with good intentions. If we don't address that, we are going to take a radical decision that will not happen. Now, and in January, we undertook what we called a revolutionary pilgrimage as the new leadership of the ANC, which is still underway. We go to all the provinces, meet uh, former leaders of the ANC, meet chiefs, meet kings, meet everybody, talk to everybody. Very good program because it gives you access to talk to people. Uh, you know, I normally talk about my trauma. One of the things that I learned when I went to Limpopo, uh, for the first time I discovered and given a book that the area of Embe was never colonized because uh, was never defeated. When the Afghanis attacked him, he dispersed them into all directions and they disappeared and lost each other. They met in an area called in Limpopo, Sukmekar, because they were looking for each other and met in Sukmekar. You see? <laughs> now, now, those pieces of history are very important for us to understand the land question. Levubu is the richest valley in South Africa. Is it used properly? Is it producing properly? Eh? Now, let me leave that because what excites me in the debate is the historic aspect of it because that historic aspect is going to help us understand why we feel so strong about accessing land. Eh? Yes. Kukuni was, was never defeated by the Afghans, including by General Beggars, who is after whom Beggars Ford is named. He never defeated him until he was reinforced by the British from KwaZulu Natal. Only then could they capture Kukuni. Now, and therefore subdued him. Now, those pieces of history are important because history gets distorted all the time. And because that is distorted, we can't have a sense in talking to one another. And my appeal, therefore, is uh, we should talk to one another. We should talk to each other. We should engage. We should listen. We should understand. We should understand the fears of those who sit on the land when we talk of expropriation without compensation. Uh, uh, the reality of the matter is that it is not a policy to drive white to the sea. That is not the policy. It has never been a policy of the ANC. It will never be the policy of the ANC unless the ANC becomes something else. It's not. It's about fair distribution of land and give our people access to that land. That debate is the debate we're having in mining, Jeremy that, listen, you can't monopolize wealth. Black people must have access to wealth. Black people must have access to land. There's a man in Yogi who owns 21,000 hectares of land. Without asking the question whether it is productive or not, it is just unfair for one man to have 21,000 hectares of land when Everybody stays around him hungry for land, you see. It's just unfair. Before you, you go to the content, it's just unfair, you know. There's a man in, in Queenstown. Uh, he's a big farmer. He mobs us every farm that comes to the market. He buys it. He has bought the entire Ida area. Eh? The entire Ida area is owned by a single man in Queenstown. It can't be fair. When we talk of exploration without compensation, those are the first candidates for the expropriation. When a person is greedy, when a person becomes greedy and takes every piece of land to himself, that person should be the first candidate for expropriation because he's not needing land, he's greedy. He's greedy. We must deal with greed uh, without being soft on greed. Greed is dangerous, Jeremy. 
you must appreciate that around you people are hungry for land, they must access that land. You must get land that is sufficient for you to produce, but the other one must be released. That's my argument for today. And number ten, and lastly, you know, the, 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 the resolution in Parliament, I think we're making too much of it. The reason that we've started this process, you know why we started this process? We started in the ANC. There's a paper of the ANC which is here. It's called a mandate for transformation. That is what we label this debate about. It's a mandate for transformation. And this paper, which this, this process will fit into, is intended to allow a rational discussion and debate on the land question. That's what it is meant. And you can't discuss the land question without uh, being going through a painful process. You must touch the raw nerves. Uh, the intention is not to make anybody feel bad or destroy anybody. The intention is that let's come to the party, let's appreciate the sensitivity of the land question. Uh, I'm sure uh, TP, the, the CEO of uh, Land Bank, will be able to say you how imbalance is the book of the Land Bank on land. Big chunk of that book is with the white farmers. Small portion is with black farmers. Very small portion. I hope you can share that with us because it is a tool of transformation in land bank if it is used appropriately. If it is used appropriately. You can look into all these tools of transformation, transform the sector, make it a sector of the people. You know, Jerem, I think mining must be part of the discussion on land. Eh? You know why? Sometimes they go and get the mineral underground, and there's a big farm on top on the surface. That is not used for anything. That land must be subjected to this debate because that is land that can be used for something else. You can't leave that land barren because there's a mineral underneath. Go underground, take the mineral, but use the surface land for production. And the, the, keynote for me, the key word for me is productive use of land. It's not only about farming, it's also about urban productive use of land. It's about all the categories of land. The key word to me is productive use of land. Therefore, people who are given any piece of land, one thing we must ensure is that they are using that land productively. So uh, the last uh, debate that is raised on this matter is a debate about size of farms and productivity thereof. And the argument that we are moving to a mega farm era. Small farms will not be productive. That is another myth that should be demystified. Intensive farming happens in small pieces of, of land, you know. Uh, I have two kids who love farming as well, Jerry. Uh, they are into chicken farming. They don't need 500 hectares. They need uh, 10 hectares and they farm productively and generate sufficient money to survive, produce. 2,000 chicken every six weeks, 2,000 chicken every six weeks, 2,000 chicken. For them, it's good cash flow, it works well. So this myth of mega farms as the future is another myth that should be demystified in this debate. Uh, I appreciate in a debate like this, there is no keynote speak. Uh, there is contribution to a debate and the debate must flow. Uh, if you disagree with that, I said, here, yeah, you have all the freedom to say you are talking rubbish, uh, it will not work in real life, that's it. That's why we are here. Okay. And I will take it, because I have a thick skin, I have been attacked by many people, including Jeremy. I'm sorry. Uh, so I'm used to being attacked in the place. I, it's not a big deal for me. The, the big deal is whether we're going to talk to each other rationally, try to understand the problem. You know, you know, Zimbabweans when they come to South Africa, they always laugh at us and say, "What are you talking about? I came through the Bay Bridge, all the big tracts of land, 
are owned by what farmers? What are you talking about? See? And we have to defend, you know, our system is systematic and step by step. And so on. <laughs> see? This, that's what we say all the time, try to argue, you know, step by step. We're not going to be uh, just reckless and so forth and so forth. But the reality of matter is people are hungry for land. The land, they don't access it. Eh? Thank you very much.